everyone, I am here today to do a very belated December wrap up. This is belated mostly because I didn't really read that much in December. At least I didn't really read that much that was new to me. Because I read so much throughout the year, I decided to give myself a bit of leeway and reread some old favourites. So most of the month was taken up with listening to the Harry Potter audiobooks, which was absolutely fantastic. As you may know, Audible recently released the Stephen Fry narrated Harry Potter audiobooks onto Audible, and ah, oh, it feels fills my heart with joy because I've been waiting for this moment. I've been dying to reread them for years now, but I wanted to listen to them as audiobooks because that was the way that I was going to get through them and it wouldn't get in the way of my other reading. The trouble of course was that they were only available on Pottermore and in CD format and they were very expensive and I like to be able to listen to my audiobooks on Audible so that I can speed up the narration where I want to. So I was absolutely over the moon when they turned up on Audible. Needless to say, they were wonderful. I've never listened to Harry Potter in audio format and and it, it's great in that format. I mean, it's great in book format. And I'd, I'd forgotten just how much these books meant to me as well. I think you're always reminded when you reread an old favourite what it was that you really loved about it. So of course the same goes for His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. I listened to the audiobooks, the forecast audiobooks of Northern Lights and The Subtle Knife in December. I finished The Amber Spyglass in January. I also revisited Brideshead as Brideshead Revisited is one of my favourite novels and I enjoyed it even more this second reading of it. I have the physical copy so I was reading passages of it that way because it's it's so very lyrical and I love the way that War writes. But I also had the audiobook which is narrated by Jeremy Irons which I cannot recommend enough. I mean he has a lovely voice, he does it such justice so good. The other favourite that I reread, re-listened to, was Women in Love and I read this at university. At the time I read it as a physical copy and I remember the experience of just wanting to read and read and read and continue even though it's, it's quite a long novel. And that's one of the few times where I felt that level of engagement with a university text, something that I had to read. On rereading it I realised that there's not that much of a plot and I knew this but it struck me more so this time round and it, it's a very philosophical novel. There's a lot of characters in discussion with each other about big issues. So I did really enjoy this on a second reading but not to the same extent as with Brideshead Revisited. But I now feel like I'm in the position where I can redesign the cover for Women in Love which has been on my to-do list for a while but I knew that I needed to reread it first. So those were the rereads. The original reads, the first time round reads that I read in December were very few. I only read two new books. One I hated and one I loved. Let's start with the negative. I, I read Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, which I just did not get on with at all. I didn't realise the extent to which this is sort of a, a self-help book and I thought that it was going to be more about creativity and maybe about her own creative process. It was more like one of these sort of mind-body-spirit books about creativity, at least that's how it came across to me, because she has a very, how do I put it, odd sort of spiritual relationship to creativity, which is not my personal experience with creativity at all. I do think that there's something sort of mystical about it in that you never quite know where ideas come from, but what she does is sort of personify ideas and she says that ideas are sort of flying around and that if somebody, a creative person, is open to that idea then it will come to them but it will only stick around for so long before it goes on to somebody else. And she claims to have evidence of this because one of her friends had basically written the novel that she had been sitting on and thinking about for several years. And myself being a much more practical, very cynical sort of person, it, it just does not sit well with me, this kind of idea. I tend to think that these sorts of things can be explained by, you know, the general feeling in, in the air. For instance, the theory of evolution. Two people came up with that at essentially the same time. Photography was invented in two different ways at the same time, more or less. I think that these things are a result of certain circumstances, cultural circumstances, that make people think in similar ways. They say that great minds think alike. These things do happen. Anyway, I found it quite difficult to look past that and 
I mean, it's, it's called Big Magic, and that's kind of how it felt that she was applying this mystical power to creativity when that's that's not how I experience it. Anyway, if you want to discuss this in the comments, feel free. In case you couldn't tell, this book really rubbed me up the wrong way, but this next book really didn't, and oh, I love this so much. It was Carol by Patricia Highsmith. It was originally published as The Price of Salt, and it's been made into a film, which is also wonderful and fills my heart with joy. Basically, I wanted to read the book before I saw the film and be a good girl in that sense. And the book is just wonderful. I'd read Patricia Highsmith's The Talented Mr. Ripley in the past and liked it. I didn't love it, but this, it's, it's a very slow paced novel. It really is just about the love story. Obviously there are, there are more complications than that, but I think it was just really refreshing to have a lesbian love story as the entire plot of a novel. I don't think that there are enough of those out there. And the film, the film of Rini Mara and Kate Blanchett are just extraordinary. It's so beautifully shot. All the fashion is just, so lovely. I mean, I'm, I'm paying homage to Rooney Mara by wearing my Alice band today. The soundtrack is exquisite. It's just wonderful. And it's a book that I would like to reread, so that's a pretty good indicator that this was a great read. So that more than made up for my dislike of Big Magic and rounded off the year in a very pleasant way. So those are the books that I read and reread in December. I will be doing a January wrap up before too long. In fact, there may be two parts of that because I've been reading a lot this month. I think I just needed that time to reread some old favourites and now it's the new year and I felt refreshed and like I want to delve into some new stuff. So as always thank you very much for watching. If you want to discuss any of the things that I've mentioned then we can do that in the comments. There will be a list of the books that I've mentioned down below as well. I will see you next time. Bye!